Hey, welcome folks from Hive World. We're uh, set up here, we're just getting the smoker going. Be right with you. Just a minute with a couple of tools. And uh, the smoker. Hope you guys can hear well. Looks like the bees are finishing off a really productive day here. Uh, some of the final foragers coming in. Um, every other bee looks like it's loaded with dandelion pollen. Hope you can hear well tonight. And this is... Um, so a really critical date now here in uh, May. So for those of you in Alberta, especially in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, welcome. And um, we're going to uh, take a look inside the hive tonight to show you um, what a hive looks like um, at this time of the year. Now, two weeks ago, uh, we were in Vancouver and we were looking at our hive and some of the hives out there and we're doing some varroa checks today we're sort of recapping on last week's subject that had to get cancelled because of rain and thunder and lightning in alberta and uh basically um the the date today is the 25th of may and we're at a really critical date today to make a decision on how high strong your hive is going to be to get you through may into june uh, not have your hive swarm but be at maximum strength for the honey flow so i'm going to show you what a hive looks like that should be split or should not be split and our hive here as you well know is two boxes strong now because we had to cancel last week in anticipation of the cancellation we actually had the opportunity to make two nucleuses out of this colony and uh the nucleuses have been made and doing really well and um, we're going to take a look in the top box now and see how the queen is doing after we put in empty frames for her to lay in upstairs so we took two nucleuses out which means we removed basically 10 frames from this uh, hive and replaced them with empty combs for the bees to use so we'll just get the smoker here and we'll get the queen the bees a bit of smoke i'll go inside and take a look and then after we're done we're going to do a little video, uh, we'll just continue the video for a minute and give a quick demonstration to those of you who are going to be receiving new bees in the next couple of weeks here and what to do with them when, you, when they arrive. <coughs>
I'm not very happy about that. Okay. Okay, so we've got a good strong colony here. Show you some of these frames that we got on the top after we made the split. There's frame number one, pretty much empty. These were ten frames of empty comb that we put in here about ten days ago. And our first one here that we've got has got a tremendous amount of dandelion pollen in there and nectar quite heavy that's frame, frame number three and then frame number four is the same tremendous amount of dandelion pollen you can see there and if you look real careful you can see our steamed queen she's right here She's up at the top box and she's looking for a place to lay. Now that we've found her, we'll just leave her on this frame. We've got going on here. Next one we have eggs and larvae. And eggs and larvae. So that's our first frame of eggs and young larvae. So that's one. And then here we've got lovely frame full of larvae and another frame full of larvae. That's two. And uh, as I'm tipping up these frames to take a look, I'm dumping out loose dandelion pollen. And then we've got another one up here that's clean and empty, ready for the queen to lay in. Another one nice and clean and ready for the queen to lay in. And then we've got another one again with a tremendous amount of nectar. And nectar and uh, old honey that the bees are cleaning out. So up here we have two frames of larvae. That's all we have in the second box and it's May the 25th. Now we'll go downstairs, take a look what we got in the bottom box. Check again for the queen. There she is. She's busy on the comb, wondering how big the brood nest is. Put these frames back in. In the order that they came out. One, two, and three. Alrighty, so we'll just set this box over here until we're ready to move it again. Now with the queen safely downstairs, we have the leisure of going down here to take a look what we got. <clears throat> and I'll try to walk you through what I find. This is the outside frame of the lower box. Now, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible, but the frame is a little stuck, rolling some of the bees here, which is not very good. There we go. Now we've got them out. And we got some lovely brood on the outside frame. Really interesting. Pretty rare. And then we go a little bit further. What do we have? We got nectar and pollen, and nectar and pollen. And then we got nectar and pollen again. And then we have our next frame, which is cat brood. 
you can see here cat brood and we have quite a lot of eggs on the other side again we have cat brood and tremendous amount of eggs so that's our third frame of brood in the hive and now we'll take a look at this and we have a tremendous frame here of capped uh, just about to be capped eggs and larvae and another one full of eggs and larvae so that's our fourth frame That's our fourth full frame, so that's eight sides. And you can see here, this is a full capped frame, right from side to side. And another one completely capped from side to side with a little bit of brood being capped over to the edges. That's our fifth frame. And then we have lovely frame dandelion pollen now it turns out that being the date that it is 25th of may this is the hive is the perfect size having made those splits two weeks ago those two nucleuses this hive is the perfect size based on the number of days that we're anticipating the main nectar flow to begin because what's going to happen between now and the main nectar flow is the queen is going to obviously going to continue to lay. And we want to make sure that, that hive isn't going to get too big before the main nectar flow and swarm. Because if the hive swarms between now and the main nectar flow, we lose the honey. We won't get any honey. So we put this hive back together again, knowing that we only have five frames, full frames of brood and a tremendous amount of stores the bees to continue to build the hive through June, through the rest of the dandelion flow, which is currently on. Make sure the queen's not on the bottom board, which she's not. And there we have it. Now, we do have a little bit of sugar syrup left, but I'm gonna dump it out because it's not very fresh. And uh, we're going to leave off the ventilation box now and just go with our regular lid directly on top of the hive. So there you have it from Hive World, a two-story colony with a tremendous amount of bees and brood, five frames of brood, and sufficient space for the queen to lay so that over the next six to eight weeks as she prepares that hive for the main nectar flow we're going to have a very 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 strong colony for the commencement of the main nectar flow now the main nectar flow in northern alberta is anticipated to begin in most regions between around the 7th and the 12th of july it's late this year because of the tremendous amount of moisture that we've had um moisture and uh, snow and um, as a result of that the bees are set back um, the farmers have been set back but the reason it could start a little earlier for some is, is if you are in proximity to a tremendous amount of alfalfa the alfalfa may be a little earlier but even still the alfalfa is fairly juvenile in most parts to be producing much honey before July the 1st this colony is expected to reach maximum population approximately 40 days from today. So it's just over one month, which should occur at about the July 1st, July 5th time period. And with the dandelion flow and how copious it is, what we find is the bees do extremely well and grow very quickly through June. And so long as they've saved up enough honey, we'll take them through June and into the beginning of the main nectar flow. 
So just to recap, if you have more than five frames of brood today in your hive, you need to do one of two things. You need to make a decision to make a split. Or you need to monitor your hive very, very closely for any signs of swarming. Because if you lose a swarm between now and July the 1st, you lose your honey crop. So there you have it for May the 25th from Hive World. Quick inspection of your hive with some smoke. It's going to save you a lot of grief. And if you've got pretty much 10 to 12 sides of a frame of brood in your hive, you're set for the main flow uh, for the 2020 beekeeping season. Uh, I'm Barry with Hive World. I will be here for questions if you want to type questions in the chat box. For those of you who are quite new, uh, I'm going to give you a very quick demonstration uh, what to do when you receive your nucleus from Hive World, whether you pick it up or whether it arrives by Canada Post. And I'm just going to demonstrate it over here <clears throat> as best I can on a bottom board that we have. <clears throat> and a very simple nucleus box that's just a little four frame, little four frame box. So wherever your hive is, Wherever you've decided to put your hive and set it up, let's pretend it's on this bottom board here in your yard on bricks or whatever it's on. What we need to do is we need to set the nucleus that you receive from Hive World directly on the bottom board. Let's pretend this is the nucleus box. You're going to remove all of the other boxes off here and you're just going to put the nucleus down with the entrance facing forward, which is a little round hole with some gauze on it. And you're going to peel off the gauze. And you're going to allow these bees to fly from this location for at least two or three days. The bees will orientate to this particular location. And then you're going to remove the box, <coughs> the nucleus box, and put your regular box here. And take the frames out of the nucleus box and put them into your big standard size box. And when you're done, shake the bees, any extra bees, into the box and put on the lid. And you can be sure that there'll be a lot of swirling around initially, but the bees will soon learn the location and they'll orientate and fly into the front of your hive without you having to worry too much about guiding them in. And by nightfall, you can be pretty confident that everything will be quiet. So there you have it from Hive World. Again, May 25 how to receive your nucleus, and what to do to prepare your hive for the main honey flow. And I'll be here for a couple of minutes, and we'll discuss how things are going. OK, so we had a question from uh ross hi ross uh can you recap early swarm signs so sure uh early swarm signs are more you've got more than five or six or seven frames of brood um in your hive you know be very cautious watch your hive very carefully watch along the bottoms of the frames between the two boxes that's the favorite place for the bees to build the swarm cells and if you notice, if your hive is in your backyard and you notice that the bees have become a little lethargic, uh, I would suggest that you may have a bit of a situation inside the hive that requires your attention. If any of you are using a hive scale, which is a computer, basically a computer monitor of the weight of the hive, if you notice that uh, the hive is very big and it suddenly flattens out with weight gain over four or five days, that's a sure sign of swarming. They are reducing the amount of um, activity that's going on in preparations for swarming. Um, so Ross, I hope that helps. Watch for queen cells or queen cups being built along the sides or the bottoms of the frames in the top box, which is that gap. Basically, the bees are building the queen cells into that gap between the top frames and the bottom. And uh, you can also watch for reduction in activity 
But more importantly is, is depending on where you are, if you are if you have more than five or six frames of brood today, and we have a good strong June. I can be guaranteed that you're most likely going to have to do something about your bees. Now, if you want to wait because you don't think they're going to go very well or whatever, you can wait a bit a little bit longer. But what then you can do is, is you can. I've got a bee trying to get into my boot here. Uh, what you can do is you can um, take out a nuke or take out several frames of brood and give them to a neighbor or something a couple of weeks from now. Uh, so the question to answer your question, uh, no, it's not too late, unless you say it's too late. Is it too late or not? Meaning that if you're in this area where I am, around uh, just east of Edmonton, and you're in this northern Alberta region, I would suggest it's not too late now to do a split. This is a perfect time. Uh, great question. So question, hi, Mike. Uh, we have a three-year-old and a two-year-old uh, queen. I'm wondering if it's time to requeen. So the best way to look at it is you saw the frames that we were just showing. Uh, if you've got good, solid brood pattern um, right now uh, and, the, and, the, and she's doing a wonderful job, leave her. Let her get to the honey flow. And then once you reach the honey flow, if you just pinch her at the time of the honey flow, about July the 7th, if you go in and find her, which will be a bit of a task because it'll be so full of bees, but if you do go and find her, my recommendation is just pinch her off and the bees will immediately raise a queen in the middle of the honey flow, which means that you won't have to use an excluder for the honey flow. It's actually quite a good requeening strategy. Or you can wait until the fall and drop in a nuke that you make during the summer with a couple of frames of brood from your hive. But to answer the question, a two or three year old queen probably should be monitored and watched, certainly the three year old. And if you don't have a solid brood pattern, I would encourage you to make some changes. Uh, Dale Cooper asks, what would you expect a five frame nuke to look like in August and October? So if a five frame nuke is purchased or picked up this weekend or next weekend and dropped into a hive, you're going to have that into two boxes for overwintering in the prairies very, very quickly, and it will produce surplus honey. Um, Yes, so kit, yeah, so your question is, is on May 25, we want to have, yes, we want to have very, very sufficient space for the queen to lay. She's got basically the maximum queen lay, uh, egg laying capacity occurs from now until the longest day. So if she lays 1,500 eggs a day, you've got to make sure that you've got at least 10 or 12 frames that are available for her to lay in. And those, those frames could right now have honey or pollen in. And as she builds the brood nest out, the bees will move the honey and the pollen in accordance with her laying pattern. Okay, thanks for the engagement, folks. Is there any other questions? Drop them here. We'll make an effort to give you a relatively uh, sane, sane answer. But uh, it is looking like um, a much, much better season than we had last year. We just want to make sure that we have appropriate rain in June and not get flooded out. If you're from Vancouver, uh, this this weekend basically is the commencement of the main flow, which is uh, uh, the blackberries. If you're in the Okanagan, we're about four weeks away. Uh, Okanagan, Penticton, etc. Uh, we're about four weeks away from some decent alfalfa and sweet clover. And if you're in Calgary, you should un you know, Calgary and uh, Chinook region. You should expect. Um, to see surplus honey coming into your hive in potentially four weeks' time. Uh, Jeff asks, would you ever treat for mites if you don't have a queen ride hive? Uh, treating for mites... Um, now, depends temperatures are sufficient to make it uh, release the acid, the acid, the formic acid. So yeah, I would I would uh, drop on Formic Pro pads, and Formic Pro is also safe for the honey flow because it doesn't impart anything to the honey. Uh, and Christy says, how many days could a beehive be queenless after a split before you add the new queen? Great question. Um, 
There's lots of uh, lots of methods, but I have, um, as many would know, I have a professional team of beekeepers that manage our hives for the honey that we produce. And um, one of the things that I'm seeing more and more is is that uh, so long as the frames of brood that are being taken away for the split are cap brood, and you are taking that hive at least two miles away, um, it can be left queenless for up to four or five days, even six days, because the age of the hive won't deteriorate for quite some time because of the hatching brood. And it seems to be that if you leave the queen, if you leave the hive queenless with no possibility of the bees being able to make um, queen cells because all the eggs are too old, um, the acceptance of the queen becomes a lot quicker and a lot faster. Uh, Mike says, why am I bees using the top entrance and should do something about it? Uh, it's a good question, Mike. Um, I, this particular hive we're looking at here, I was quite surprised at the way it behaved in the spring. Um, it went from it went from uh, using the top entrance and then suddenly we had this switch and it started to use the bottom entrance. And then it was interesting that the, I found that the bees had moved down. So make sure the bottom of your box is being utilized as much as it should be. And if it's not, you can reverse the boxes. So put the bottom box at the top and the top at the bottom. The other thing you can do is you can go out in the evening and you can put a, a gauze over it, a screen, and staple the screen on. The bees will be forced to use the bottom entrance. And after two days, you'll find them all using the bottom entrance. And if they're not already using the bottom box, Forcing them to use the bottom entrance actually forces the bees downwards and the queen very quickly moves down because all the new nectar and pollen is being stored down there. Okay, we thank everybody very much for joining. Have a great evening and we look forward to meeting everybody at our next Meet the Beekeeper. Good night.